so you have you've had some horrible setbacks across the course of your career. You've spoken about the broken legs um, on you know several different occasions, but you actually say that the toughest injury was the shoulder at Fremantle. Tell us why. Yeah, so I I think again it was it was a similar situation where it was in my last year there, and I know that we'd had a really tough year as a team, and personally I've been out of the team mid year and got back in, and I'm finally strung I'm strung five or six really good games together. And um, it was round 17, and I remember going for the ball. I, there, yeah, there it is there. I've gone for the ball because the week before, I'd come up in an RFI in our meeting because there was an opportunity to go for the ball like that, and I kind of reached. So this one, I remember imaging that and going, I'm hardwired to not let that happen again. So I went through and did the shoulder. I thought I'd just done a stinger or an AC joint. And... Um, so what's going through your mind right there? Because yeah. that's a tough moment. Yeah, I think is this I, your last game for the Dockers as well? Yeah, and I knew yeah. that at the time. Like I, I knew that day that that when I, when I couldn't have my jumper, they cut it off me, and I knew that would be it. Um, because of the way the year had gone, and my shoulder was really, um, I couldn't lift my arm or anything, so I was quite emotional with it because what I'm thinking there is it's yeah, I'm done here, at the Dockers. But from there, I didn't know how severe it actually was. Like it was. There was some nerve damage in my shoulder where I couldn't actually lift my arm probably for about three months. So my kind of prospects of going to another club was diminishing because I was told by the surgeons that it could take two years to fully, um, you know, the nerve to kick back in because nerves, I've had you now two of them. They're, they're, they don't really, um, yeah, it's, it's not up to you for when you can when you can fix them. And there's not, not much you can do. There's nothing you can do to fix them apart from time. Apart of apart from all the broken bones, what 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 is what has football given you, Mick? If, if if this is to be it, what do you how do you reflect on your career? Um, oh, I'm so proud of kind of my career to date, and if it is it, yeah, I'm, so, I'm super proud of the people I've met and kind of had an influence on. Even this last this last year, I've kind of talked a fair bit about how challenging it's been, challenging it's been, but it's been so fulfilling as well because you put yourself in a circumstance where okay, and there's I'm not the first, and I won't be the last. You put yourself in this, um, you're in the reserves, you're out of favour. No worries, you can go one or two ways. I feel like I've really helped some younger players, especially over the last two or three years when I've become more of an older statesman. Initially, it was like Lockie Neal and Connor Blakely um, at Freo, Tommy Sheridan a bit, and then you go to the Suns. And this year, I just had great pride in seeing Charlie Ballard step up and play AFL football. Um, Jacob Dawson, who's off a Category B rookie list. Um, has it given you a taste for coaching? Slightly, yeah, it <laughs> has a little bit. It's, when I was under Ross, I just thought coaching's the worst thing I'd ever want to do. <laughs> and he, also, he also told me that, don't do it yourself, mate. Um, <laughs> but now, I, I, having experienced two environments and having had some, um, you know, I, I've, I've loved my career. Like, it's, I wouldn't change anything, really. So I've kind of experienced a lot. I've got a bit of a passion kind of in the development space, I think, and, and player welfare. Um, and then you know, maybe some media I enjoyed t- you know, talking to some rubbish and, so and what did Ross say about that? oh he said Ross said you're smarter than that present company um, <laughs> that's alright we got alright speaking rubbish that's <laughs> alright <laughs> you've obviously had a really challenging year what people don't know is that you've also had some real challenges on the home front as well uh, tell us about that um, yeah I won't go into too much detail I suppose and um, so it was actually, yeah, my mum's been quite um, sick this year and it's, it's a tough one, tough one because your, your mum and your, your parents, my dad and mum, they're my, my heroes and I also just think they're always um, going to be there and they, they always, you know, put you in the line when you need to be put in the line and um, they've had a really challenging year, I think, seeing my challenges and being away from home for so long, they kind of see your your struggles from a distance and they can't do much on a day-to-day basis. Um, but, yeah, she's mum's um, had, a, had a cancer earlier in the year, which we thought we'd got on top of. Um, we, we kind of do it as a family. Um, and then, you yeah, know, it was, it was uh, actually the day I got back playing from my um, nerve injury that I got a call in the morning from Dad and he kind of said, you've got to come home. And mum without going again into too much, she's, she's not well and she, the, the cancer's kind of kicked back in and it's going to be a bit of a challenge for us to, to see, um, you know, see her kick it. But we're, we're invested in it and invested in 
um, getting no better and, and enjoying the time with family and that's something it's been a really hard seven weeks since kind of it's, we've found out but at the same time some of the moments we've had as a family um, can't be underestimated about just the special times you have like dinners and went and watched my sister play netball in the grand final on the weekend and um, mum loves her netball and no, no one mum's losing her voice a bit but the Geelong amateurs who Maisie plays for couldn't get much support because the opposition had all the support and mum's trying to yell and scream and then we're like oh, we might better have to kick in here and <laughs> try and support a bit louder um, so it's just been really as confronting this and challenging she'll fight through it and we'll be behind her as a family um, but I'm yeah, it kind of pales into significance some of the ch- professional challenges I've had is um, when someone you love isn't very well. So um, she's going okay and she'll probably be watching this and, um, yeah, so I'll say hello to Mel and Daddy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, we send her uh, the very best of luck in this fight and also to you for whatever path uh, your football career and your journey goes from here. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story with us and congratulations on what to date has been a really resilient and also brilliant career. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, next, the Demons reflect on their amazing final win against Geelong. Yeah, well, the pro-